Hi, I'm going to show you how to play Carta Marina, a cooperative two-player game. Uh, the second edition is published um, by Arclight Games, and the box says it takes about 30 minutes to play. So generally in Carta Marina, you're on a boat, and you try to get home, and it's stormy, and a kraken has just attacked your ship. And when a kraken has attacked your ship, the ship gets damaged, and uh, water gets into the ship, and uh, the storm is raging on, so water is coming in more and more in different places, and at some point, um, a big wave is coming, and then everything is shifting to different places, um, and when it's shifting more and more, and then it's a different direction, and at one point, um, a place on your ship is not just damaged, it's flooded, and then um, everything gets worse, suddenly more water is coming in, and, uh, well, at the same time, um, you need to drain the ship of the water and also steer the ship across the sea to your hometown without drowning. <laughs> okay, so reverting the board. This is generally what the game is about, uh, about but now I'll show you exactly how it plays. So, um, to set up you put your ship figure on the starting position on um, the root board. The root board shows the sea and some reefs on it and you have to navigate your way home on there. And you choose two characters out of six available characters. Uh, here I've got Charlotte and Rick. And you put your meeple on the spot that's indicated on the character card. So for Charlotte it's W1 and for Rick it's E2. And the Kraken has already attacked, so um, the ship is already damaged, so you shuffle the damaged tiles and reveal three of them. And at the back of them they have the coordinates on the ship where they should be put on. Um, so the ship generally has nine spaces. Um, on the west side it has W1, 2, 3 and 4, and on the east side it has E1, E2, E3 and E4. The ninth spot is the steering wheel, that's in the centre between W3 and 4 and E3 and 4, and it's a special spot because it doesn't get affected by any of the threads. And here we have E4 is damaged, E3 is damaged, and W1 is damaged. And when something gets damaged, you put two water cubes on them. And every character starts with four sail cards, uh, specifically only the action cards. So sail cards can have action cards and threat cards. So you draw four cards. Um, yep, so these are all action cards and you put them openly in front of you. Because I don't have quite enough space, I'll, I'll put them down like this, um, but you should ideally show all of them. Um, and I also now draw four for Nick, uh, Rick. <laughs> and yeah, um, in the setup phase, um, when you draw a threat card, and this is one of the two types of threat cards, then you discard that and draw up until you have four action cards in your hand. Um, so this is the other type of threat card. So I'll discard that as well. And another threat card. And another one. So here. Yeah. So now Rick also has four action cards. Um, okay, so the threat cards that were discarded gets put back into the deck and you shuffle it. 
and put it onto the attack card. So this big card is uh, the attack card and you put it face down. So that's all you need to do to set up the game. Um, the first player is the one whose uh, character name uh, comes first in the alphabet, so Charlotte goes first. And every turn consists of an action phase and a draw phase. So in the action phase, you can take any three out of five possible actions, and you can also take the same action multiple times. So the five actions are steer, drain, move, give and gain. I'll explain all of them. So um, uh, Charlotte is first. So on her, sp uh, she's on a spot that is already damaged. It has two water cubes on it. So she might want to drain um, this uh, spot. So um, to drain, you have to discard a card um, and for each discarded card you can um, remove one water cube. There are special uh, drain cards. So most of the cards have this one bucket on them, um, but some of them have three buckets on them. And when they have three buckets, you can discard this um, to, to drain a place of three cubes, um, but then you have to move this out of the game. Um, so it counts as one action to drain a place of three cubes, but the card is discard uh, not just discarded, it's, it's removed from the game. So in this case, maybe I don't want to do that yet. Um, but yeah, so I'll just play this card in, in the standard way and drain this of one space. Another thing I can do is I can um, steer the ship and for that I have to be at the steering wheel and I need to have four cards of the same direction. And here I have three cards that go to the right so I could not just do that. I would still need another one and maybe I'll ask Rick to give it to me. So another action I can do is move. One move is one action. So I had I drained the place of one cube. That's one action. I moved. Second action, I move again to go to Rick. Uh, that's my third action. And I'm done. Um, so after the um, action phase comes the draw phase. In the draw phase, you declare if you want to draw two or four cards. And your hand limit is six, so at the end of the draw phase, you have to discard down to six. So at the moment, I think maybe I'll just one, two. So I'm taking one, two. Nothing bad happens because there are also threat cards in here, but I haven't drawn any threat cards, so that's okay. Um, so that's the end of my turn, or Charlotte's turn. And now it's Rick's turn. So Rick. Um, Rick gives Charlotte one card. Um, that's one action. I could also receive a card. That's the same type of action. I cannot exchange, or I can exchange, but that's two actions. Just for the sake of it, I'll sh um, explain the gain action. You can also draw two cards. Um, and when you draw two cards, you do the same thing that you do during a draw phase. But I'll just draw one, two. Haha, -ha. we got a threat card. This is a flood card. Um, a flood card means more water comes into the ship. Um, and how much and where depends on the state of the spot that is indicated on the card. So this card says E4. And E4 is a damage tile. Every damage tile gets two cubes put on them. If it had not been damaged but intact, it would only uh, get one cube. And if it was flooded, it gets two cubes to the adjacent tiles, which I'll show you later. So, okay, so the um, 
when you draw a threat card, you uh, resolve it immediately, and then at the end you can discard, and he takes this card into his hand, and that was one action that I did. That, yeah, that was my second action, just to show you how that works. And then let's say he moves, uh, as the last action, he moves to E3, and that's him done, uh, but he also needs to do the draw phase. I'd say he draws a two again, so ooh, here's, here we have uh, the other type of threat cards, so there are flood threat cards and billow threat cards. So this one means that the water moves because a big wave is coming. For that, you roll the die, there's a two, and on the card you see um, it shows you where the water moves. So um, it moves to the east in this case, that means up to two cubes move to the east. Um, most cubes are already in the east, so nothing is happening here, but W1 has one cube and that moves to the east. Um, that's one, and then the second card, we there's another, another flat card, W4, that's an intact spot, so it only, only gets one cube. If during the same draw phase you draw more than two attack cards, then you just ignore the others. So you only ever need to deal with the first two attack cards. Okay, so he didn't draw he didn't draw any of the of new action cards for the only threat cards, but those get discarded. So that was his turn. Now I can show you how Charlotte steers. So first of all, she moves one, two. To the steering wheel because you need to be at the steering wheel to steer and now she can oops she can discard these four cards um to move to the right or to starboard there okay we're one step further to the goal um there are some um, special steer cards, which, yeah, so um, Brick has one here. Um, they work similarly to the special drain cards. It has two arrows on them. Most of them have just one, but this one has two. Um, that means if you use um, a special function of this card, you can count this card as two cards, meaning you'd only need one more, so you'd need three cards, so one is the double arrow and two normal ones, or two double arrow ones, which actually I don't think exists, so <laughs> there's only one per direction. Um, so that's a shortcut, um, yeah, to, to, to do things quicker, but if you use it that way, you have to remove it from the, from the game. So Charlotte has moved and steered, she moved twice, right? Yeah, and steered, so that's her um, her turn done. Um, so to iterate, you can either steer um, or drain, that means remove cubes, um, move on the shipboard, give someone or receive a card when you're both on the same spot, um, or gain, meaning drawing two cards. Um, there is, um, when you're steering and you're steering uh, across this um, bucket symbol on the root board, then you gain a bonus action. That means the person or the character who is not steering can drain all the cubes from the spot that they're on. So here, Rick can get rid of these two cubes in that case. Um, if there are no cubes, then obviously you cannot drain the cubes. Um, there are some special cases for how the water moves, which I'll explain. So, um, just imagine uh, I, I draw a flood card that tells me to put something on um, 
Well, I haven't had, uh, I haven't told you yet what flooded car, uh, tiles do and when something is flooded. So um, just imagine, yeah, more things happen, more more things get damaged. I'll just put more stuff on the board here, more water. Uh, so so now imagine um, I draw a billow card and everything moves south. So that means. Here, something moves south here, but um, W2 and W3 are only connected through a dotted line, and E2 and E3 are only connected through a dotted line, and the water never moves through a dotted line. Um, so, but the water moves from E3 to E4. E4 already has four cubes on it, and um, um, a spot gets flooded whenever it gets, uh, it has five cubes. So only one of them moves, not both of them, because a flooded tile can never have more than five cubes, or no tile can ever have more than five cubes. So as soon as something has five cubes, it's flooded. Um, and flooding means, so imagine um, I get now a flood card that says E4, and that means um, I put two cubes on the adjacent W4 and two cubes on E3. If water ever moves, so if now um, a billow comes and uh, things move north, um, E4 loses two cubes. So let's, let's say there are less cubes on here. So E4 loses two cubes to E3, but um, flooded tiles always get filled up again to five. There are always five on there. But on the other hand, if now things E3, um, uh, there's a below and it's going south, E3 would not lose any more to E4 because there cannot be more than five, so E3 will keep all its four uh, cubes that are currently on there. And yeah, imagine there's a uh, W3 is flooded as well. Uh, let's just put some cubes on here. Um, and if now everything is moving to W2, it can't because that's a dotted line. But also, if it's if there's a flood card and W3 gets flooded even more, meaning uh, the adjacent spots get two cubes, so W3 would get, well, only one in this case because it already had four. <laughs> Um, but W2 doesn't because there's a dotted line. Um, yeah. So there's th those were the, th the two main attacks, um, flood and billow. But there's a third a tower, a third threat. Uh, that is, if uh, when <laughs> the deck runs out and it will run out multiple times, um, an attack happens, or the crack and attacks again. And when that happens, you take the next damage tile, check where it goes. It's W4. Um, actually, yeah. Um, and put two more cubes on it. <laughs> so in this case, there are four on it right now. So you only put one on there, and it gets flooded immediately. <laughs> in this case. Uh, Yeah, and if if the deck ran out during your turn and you, you hadn't finished your turn, um, you resolve the attack the moment you resolve the last card drawn from there. Then you um, put the discarded cards or the discard pile back into the deck and shuffle and put, put it back on top of the attack card. So when the Kraken attacks in the middle of your turn, you deal with the attack and then you finish your turn. So let's say you draw one, then you deal with the Kraken attacking, and then you shuffle the discard pile, put it back on, and then you draw the next card. So the game ends in multiple ways. You lose if either four spots are flooded, or eight spots are damaged or flooded, or steering is not possible, 
like if this was flooded here, if E3 and W3 were flooded, um, because you cannot go through a flooded tile, a, a, a character cannot go, go through it. Um, so then steering would become possible, unless at the moment there's someone at the steering wheel, so that would still work. Um, or if a character drowned twice. So you drown if you're on, let's just, uh, this. so if you're on a tile that gets flooded while you're on it, um, so here, let's say there's a fifth um, cube on E4 and Rick is currently there and this gets, gets flooded, um, then you drown. And it's fine uh, to drown the first time, for some reason. <laughs> uh, you just go back to the steering wheel and lose all of your action cards in your hand. They get discarded. But if you drown a second time, then you all lose the game. You win if nothing of that happens and you managed to come uh, to get to the goal space on the root board. Yeah, so that was the basic game. Um, but there's some advanced play. There are multiple um, characters um, and they all have special abilities. So we have, yeah, so Charlotte here that we already have out here, she um, can move two spaces on the ship instead of one. Rick can drain more than one cube in one action if he discards that many cards. So he can drain, for example, uh, two cubes with, uh, by discarding two cards. Then we have Clyde who can take an additional action, so four actions instead of three. We have Arya who can give or receive up to three cards instead of one. We have Henry who can use an action card as if it was a special steer card, so that counts then as two cards. Um, and we have Leon who protects the spot that he is on. Um, that means it will not be affected by threat cards. Um, <clears throat> there are more things, uh, more, more advanced things that all have to do with the campaign mode, although I'm not sure I, it doesn't really fully deserve the, the word <laughs> campaign mode. It's, it's a very light campaign mode um, that follows the storybook. So um, the game comes not just with rules, but also with a storybook, which has some campaigns. So um, there are some very light spoilers ahead. So if you if you don't want to know what happens in the storybook, just stop the video now. Um, but I say it's very light because not much happens. So I, I, I uh, there's there's a proper story in here which I haven't read, so I don't really know what happens, but. Um, Generally, you use a different uh, root board um, in every new chapter. So there are five chapters. This is the one for chapter one. There's one for chapter two. And then there are two more boards. There's one for chapter two, uh, three and four. And another one for chapter five. And they just get <clears throat> more difficult every time. Um, the root book for chapter five has two more, well, it's two bits longer. Um, and three and four is one bit longer than one and two. And it also has many more uh, reefs on the board. Uh, I hadn't mentioned this, but I, I guess that's probably hopefully clear that you're, you cannot move on to a spot with a reef on with a ship. So you have to steer around it. Okay, so apart from the this the root board changing, 
uh, other things happen. Um, so in chapter two, you choose an additional ability per character. Same with chapter three. And in chapter four and five, you choose one additional ability and one additional item per character. And after chapter five, you can play with Leon. So Leon, I think he's the captain and you, the crew is looking for the captain. And, and after chapter five, you found him and then you can play with Leon. Um, so additional abilities. So these go onto the character cards like this. Okay, so there are five additional abilities. Um, one is information exchange. You can exchange a card. Um, so give and receive a card instead of giving or receiving. There is um, speed. You can discard one card and move anywhere on the ship. Um, this does not count as an action. Crisis management. You can re-roll the die once per billow. Uh, hog eyes. You can keep up to eight cards instead of six at the end of the draw phase. So that's your uh, new hand limit. And efficiency. You can announce and draw two three, four, or five cards instead of two or four uh, during the draw phase. Um, then we have additional items. Um, with the items, uh, you can only use them once per game. So when you've used them, uh, you can just flip them around to show that you've used it. So what we have here is we have sandbags. Sandbags, um, there's a special sandbag tile. You can put that between two spots on the shipboard. That means that this now counts as a dotted line, so water cannot move across it, but um, characters still can. We have um, gale steering. That means you can discard five cards for two ship moves, well, usually you discard four for one. You have a cannon. With a cannon, you can shoot at the reef <laughs> and put out one of these cannon uh, um, sea tiles, um, meaning the reef is gone and you can go onto that space. This has a different color because this only gets introduced from chapter three onwards. So it fits better on, on this board here. Um, and then there's a second one that is for chapter five because that board has a different color and a different, the, the pieces have a slightly different shape. Okay, then we have the repair tools. That means you can um, remove the damage tile you're on, if you're on a damage tile. Um, um, but you have to discard two cards for that, so you can remove the whole tile. And the last bit is emergency drainage. That means you can remove one cube from all the spots. Um, but obviously the flooded tiles still fill up to five again. Yeah, that was the um, advanced play. There's also a solo mode. Um, for the solo mode, you have to remove uh, where are they? the special drain, yeah, the special drain cards, uh, three of them, um, and three that go into each of the directions, so one each starboard, uh, steady, and port. Um, you also choose just one single character. And because of that, there are a couple of things you can't do. You can't use the give action. And you cannot also use the bonus bucket action. Um, but I personally, I actually prefer to play solo mode in the same way you play the two player mode. So I'll just pre pretend to be two people and play with two characters. And that works also pretty well. 
Yeah. And that's how you play Carta Marina. Thanks for watching.